Get ready for a very special adventure through a country of immense beauty, but one still haunted by its past, where foreign invaders killed millions of its citizens while destroying much of its precious heritage. Where a resilient people have rebuilt their lives and their country in spectacular fashion, both at home and on the world stage. Today, their economy is booming and they're ready for the world to come have a look around. So join us on this trip as we explore a massive fortress built by a legendary order of medieval knights and travel to a thousand-year-old city that served as a hideout for these rebellious characters. We'll venture deep below the earth and discover a holy cathedral carved entirely from salt. And then pass through the gates of evil into Adolf Hitler's most notorious death camp. Before traveling to hell and back, literally and in style. Our guide on this unusual journey is a man who knows this country well, because he was very much a part of it. At just 11 years old, he was an underground freedom fighter. By the age of 19, he had been kidnapped, arrested, and beaten multiple times by the secret police, before ultimately prevailing over his captors by helping to bring on the collapse of a rigid and cruel empire. His name? Mateusz Morawiecki. And he is the Prime Minister of Poland. So get ready. For the next hour, we'll get the security clearance to go on an exclusive inside the bubble trip with this world leader as he shows us his country as only he can. I'm Peter Greenberg, and this is Poland, the Royal Tour. Poland is an Eastern European country about the same size as Germany or the U.S. state of New Mexico, and it's got more than a few neighbors surrounded by Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine and Belarus, Lithuania, and the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad. Poland is essentially a fertile, rolling plain, stretching from the sand-fringed Baltic Sea in the north to the snow-capped Tatras Mountains in the south. The northeastern part of the country is graced with an abundance of lakes, marshes, and dense forests. And the mother river of Poland, the Vistula, runs the entire length of the country from south to north for 650 miles before emptying into the Baltic Sea. Near the center of this country of 39 million people is the capital of Warsaw, which is where I began my tour. Prime Minister Morawiecki asked me to join him at the Belvedere Palace before heading out. On the drive-in, I was surprised to see how much this city has changed in the intervening years since my first visit. What was once rather bleak, monochromatic, and undeveloped during Soviet domination is now awash with color, vibrancy, and vivid architecture in what's now claimed an independent Poland. Originally built in the late 1600s, Belvedere Palace then belonged to various Polish leaders until the outbreak of World War II, when it was occupied by the Nazis. Ironically, that's why it remains one of the few structures in Warsaw not destroyed during the war. Peter, very good to see you here. Thank you so much for having us. No, no, not at all. My pleasure. Today, the palace is used as the official residence for visiting heads of state, and in our case, for the beginning of my conversation with the prime minister. Quite an impressive room. Yes, well. I... Protocol notwithstanding, much of the perception of Poland by the outside world continues to haunt it. 
you know, being in Poland changes my view on so many things. When I was growing up, I mean, I saw everything through a black and white lens. Poland was often seen as a victim. It was invaded, invaded by everybody. Many times, yes. Right? Since becoming a nation state in the year 966, Poland has been invaded by the Holy Roman Empire, the Ottomans, the Tatars, the Mongols, the Prussians, the Hungarians, even Sweden and Denmark, just to name a few.